We've got Tyler from PVS Performance Tuning here and we just wanted to have a little update. We interviewed Tyler last year at World Time Attack when he was running his Toyota 86 with the Bullet Supercharger kit and uh, this year we noticed that he's made a few changes to the car and, and updated a few bits. So Tyler, it's changed under the, uh, the bonnet. What have you actually done to it for this year? Um, we've got a SME uh, turbo kit uh, running the Borg Warner EFR turbo. Um, we've E85'd it this year as well. Um, and just increase the obviously the power levels, a little bit more boost. Um, but yeah, look, it responded a lot better than I thought. Uh, we were doing roughly 49 flats last year, and we're now doing sort of 44.8. So we pulled a fair bit of time out. The car essentially, shows you wise, hasn't changed an awful lot. Sort of lack of testing and what have you. But um, yeah, big difference. Let's back it up a little bit. So last year you were running that Bullet Supercharger kit, and what sort of power was it producing back then? About 165, 170 kilowatt at the wheels. And that, that's on a Dynapack Dyna? Same as yours, yeah. Um, and now we're running around the 260 mark um, on the Dyna, yeah. But a big increase in torque, that was the main that's a, that's a huge increase in power. What what was it that um, made up your mind to actually move away from the supercharger kit? I pushed the bar I pushed the bar with that kit as much as I thought I could as far as what, uh, with, with everything, fuel, timing, boost, and um, yeah, it just didn't just didn't make any more. I just couldn't push any more, and I knew that if I was trying to keep up with keep up with the game, I just needed to uh, yeah find something that's going to yeah push that level. I know all the turbo kits were sort of pushing better power, and uh, I saw your AVO kit and all that, and I was pretty impressed with the turbo setup. So that was the decision. Uh, in terms of the turbocharger you've chosen for this kit, what have you got on there? Uh, it's an EFR Borg Warner. Uh, look, forgive me if I don't get the number right. I think it's a seven one two eight, or it's a, it's a seven series, not the six seven like your one. Um, and it's just a lot more efficient. We, we are going to build an engine, so next year we'd like to build an engine that's going to push that limit. You know, maybe get another hundred fifty odd horsepower. And so I want to have a turbo that's going to flow five hundred horsepower, basically. So. Now, in terms of the boost pressure you're running on that that turbo at the moment, compared to the supercharger, what 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 are the different boost levels? Uh, Twelve pound at, at sort of the the start of I guess around sort of anywhere from sort of three three eight. Uh, it does taper off only to ten pound. So at the top end, the boost levels are actually the same, but they're just a lot more efficient. Like the boost levels are essentially virtually the same, except the mid range is a little bit more obviously compared to the supercharger. Okay, now there's also, uh, you know, there's two schools of thought. Some people are big fans of the supercharger because positive displacement, you've got that instant boost pressure. Yeah. And then obviously with these newer turbos, we've got like the Borg Warner EFR series. Uh, they've put a lot of technology into improving that boost yeah. response. Yeah. You've driven both combinations. What's the difference from the driver's seat? Look, in all honesty, as a daily driver, the supercharger kit's fantastic. It's it's low ag. It's good with the intake, like inlet temps, underbonnet temps. Good, great driving to and from work. You know, changing lanes and all that sort of stuff. But the turbo kit is just it just makes it. It just loves it, and it just this engine in a standard form. I'm a little bit blown away about how much it's taken, and I haven't even. It's, it wants to suck me in, and it wants to say, give me 20, but yeah, I, I really yeah, I don't know where its limits are, to be honest. It's, it's just doing it easy. It just does it a lot easier. Better at, probably in a track situation. And we've seen uh, numbers uh, from guys over in the US market, uh, 600 plus wheel horsepower, and obviously maybe you get away with that for one or two dyno pulls, but uh, you, you're actually punching this thing around the track and beating up on it really hard. So obviously uh, some restraints, obviously smart there. Now, um, with the fuel system, what have you had to do there to move to E85 fuel? Again, um, I'm trying to market the fact that you can do these sort of things with a standard car. Standard, like to be honest, I'm running an upgraded fuel pump. Um, I'm still running standard fuel lines. Um, basically, everything to the engine is standard bar the fuel pump. Um, and obviously, upgrade injectors with E85. Uh, I'm running some, yeah, the, the Deutsch, uh, sorry, the uh, ID 1300s in this case. Um, yeah, so they're, they're the only two things I've had to do to the fuel system. Admittedly, if you're really hooking it and you're really throwing the car around, you're going to come across some fuel surge. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm running the car a bit fat, I'm running a bit heavy, but I'm um, running the fuel up a bit. That's the only thing I've got to look at. Probably a surge tank, but realistically on the road, it doesn't miss a beat. It's perfect. And now these cars, as probably most people are familiar with them would know, they're, they're running a combination of direct injection yep. and port injection, yep. and you're obviously still running that direct injection. How critical do you find that to uh, getting 
good results and reliability with a very high compression turboed engine? To be honest, I found it pretty good. Um, in a standard form, if you want to run on pump fuel, I find it, it is a little bit critical. You've got to get the direct and port right because they do feed off each other. As you do get higher in the, the power and you go E85, unfortunately the little direct injectors kind of run out of flow. So finding that balance and, and tuning off the port is, you know, that's where all the time is. You know, as you know, sort of, yes, the, the direct injectors work to a point, but then as you E85, you do have to, you, know, you kind of don't run them as much, unfortunately, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a it's an impressive setup, Tyler, and you know I've got a very similar setup on our own project car, so I'm excited now seeing what you've got out of this to get back uh, back home and get onto the dyno. I just want to grab your computer. I need the Motec, so that's it. It's actually just let's talk about that a little bit. You're still running a uh, a reflash here. Yeah. Uh, we're running a Motec M1 plug and play on our own car. Uh, what what do you see as the benefits or why would you want to move from a reflash to a standalone? Look, flash tuning, look it's great to a point but you just don't have that control. I'm pretty fussy with certain things whether it be cold starts, hot starts, drivability if you're cruising along. I don't want it chugging every now and then and look wide open throttle stuff, it, this hasn't been too bad, I've, I've been okay with it but you just, I don't have confidence in it and I, I bet most people don't because it's not live as you know, you sort of you're flashing in, running it up, there's so many compensations in there that you can't get, that you don't know what they are, that control things, unfortunately, so. And another thing as well with the reflash, it, it's uh, it's quite quick and easy to do when you're only uh, talking about light modifications, That's maybe right. you, you've left the engine naturally aspirated. Yeah. When you actually start getting more serious, you're talking about turbocharging, yeah. larger injectors and rescaling for E85, there is a lot more work to do in there. You've got an engine that's worth you know, even if you build it, it's going to cost you, I don't know, 10 grand. They're pretty expensive to rebuild, and for the sake of, um, you know, a few grand or whatever for a computer, um, if, you're if you're building an engine and it costs you 15 or 20, uh, it's a no-brainer. You've got to, got to do it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tyler. Can't wait to get back on the dyno and see what I can punch out of mine, and uh, good, luck, good luck for the rest of the weekend. Right, thank you. Thanks. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.